Hey guys, welcome back to the Scott Spot. We're in the middle of a cutscene here, uh, just real quick. Last time on Final Fantasy XIII, uh, Hope actually went through with Operation Nora, but luckily a missile strike caused them to both fall, him and Snow, uh, off the edge of a building. But Snow took the, the brunt of the impact from the fall, and Hope's now unconscious, and Snow's just trying to get him home. Why'd you save me? I was asked to keep you safe. By lightning. And by Nora. I'm sorry. What happened, it was my fault. I put her in danger. I know that. Let me make things right. You told me before that you couldn't. And that words were useless and a lot of other things I shouldn't have said. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to set things straight. So I didn't. I thought if I couldn't make up for it, then all the apologies in the world wouldn't mean a thing. So I decided I had to find a way to pay for it first, before I'd even have the right to say sorry. But it's like you said, I was using that as an excuse so I could run from my own guilt. That hit home. <clears throat> oh. Look, Hope. I know what happened was my fault. I don't deny it, and I am sorry. Here. That's lights, isn't it? I... Why'd you... That knife was a present from Sarah. To keep her safe. She trusted you with something that important. You should be the one to carry it. I'll find a way to make things better. Just give me time. If nothing I do is good enough, then I'll take any punishment you want to dish out. She's gone, Snow. You can take the blame, but, but it won't bring her back. I'm sorry. I, I knew it all along. I knew it, but they had to blame someone. They had to. I needed a reason to, to keep on fighting. It wasn't someone's fault. It was mine. Take it out on me. And keep yourself alive until you do. I have to keep going. Look at that. You don't even need any help. <laughs> You're all right. That's good to see. <sighs> Just let me catch my breath. <clears throat> oh. Always the hero. 
You want to die? You can't. I won't let you! Oh, damn. This might be my favorite hope moment. He actually takes this huge mech on by himself without or without Snow's help just to protect him. This is when I decided that Hope was probably my favorite character. Of course, he doesn't even begin to stand a chance against his sink because uh, he doesn't have a way to stabilize the chain gauge. Can I leaper this guy? Yeah, there we go. So I could keep this up all day, but uh, unfortunately this is an unwinnable battle. It was a valiant effort though, Hope. Wait, what if I... can I use protect? Actually, there's no point since what we want to do is actually let this, let this thing lower our uh, damage. See, look, it's got 37,000... or 30... no, 378,000 HP and we've got it down to 375. So theoretically, we could win eventually, but no, we're just going to want to let it deplete our HP. Not bad, kid. Where's Snow? He's okay. Sure you're up to this? Thing will never know what hit it. All right, so now things are back to normal. Let's see, let's switch to this. Lightning can heal while I put some bad stuff on this guy. It's not immune to slow, is it? Nope. Susceptible to slow. Alright, so actually, Lightning, Fang, and Hope is one of the best combination or team combinations you can have. Uh, Thanks. I'll let Hope finish putting shell on. Everybody. Because Lightning's a great, uh... Lightning and Hope are both great Ravagers, and Lightning and Fang are both great physical attackers. You got Hope who can heal, and Lightning who can heal, and Hope can also put, uh... uh Hope can buff, and Fang can debuff, so you pretty much got, like, a perfect group. There's other combinations that are arguably better once you get later on in the game. All this thing's already staggered. And let's launch the bitch then. I'm tired of this thing. Wish we had aggression though. Get back in the air. So yeah, as you can see, this is going to take several staggers. Ah, too bad Snow's injured. If we had a fourth person, this would be cake. He brings in the stain gauge, stain gauge, chain gauge, guys. Come on, Fang, launch it back into the air. Man, Fang doesn't want to get up there. Damn, I need to be careful. Okay, let's heal. Diversity. I'm gonna let uh, Hope heal us back up. Heal faster, Hope. Pinpoint beam, that doesn't sound good. Good thing this thing's susceptible to slow, though. Now hear yourself, Hope. Back to Relentless. But yeah, when Hope takes that thing on by himself, it's just one of the most epic moments ever. Heal yourself, Hope. Damn it. Man, I can't wait until one of our medics learns sprays. Shit. Here I hope. There we go. Alright, let's take this thing on. Damn, it's slow ran off. I need to fix that once the stagger's over. Hopefully we can finish it this stagger, but I think that's probably being too uh too hopeful. Do we get the full picture of this thing yet? Okay, so that's why everybody's using lightning. It's a Lightning's using lightning, and Hope's oh, using lightning. Thing is weak against it. 
Just look at the thousands of points of damage pile up. Hopefully I can get in two more rounds here, at least. Fang's just beating the shit out of it. <laughs> get back in the air. Now how much HP you got? Let's say 90,000 left out of 30, 378. You won't last much longer, Mr. Ushamal Subjugator. Round two. Smite! Oh yeah, we got to see a smite. Awesome. That did a huge dent. Alright, raise it back up. Actually, let's, uh, let's see, what else do I have? Just that one? Let's put slow back on. Slow, slow, slow. And it's back on. You're going down. Just need to raise your gauge back up as quickly as possible. This thing is less challenging than I remember, actually. But yeah, like I said before, you can kick some serious ass with Fang, Lightning, and Hope. I'm starting to say the same things over and over again, though. These boss battles, the farther you get into the game, the longer they just drag on. Which is good, though, because I hate short battles. And you're about to get staggered. It wouldn't it be nice if I could finish you off with a launch? Okay, Hope's dead, but I'm not going to bother reviving him at this point. Just keep them juggled, guys. Goodbye, sir. Um, Operation Nora didn't work out. Oh, oh my. You'll be okay. I'll keep you safe. Lightning. I... Me too. I mean, at least I'll try. I'll try to watch out for you too. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget about this one. <laughs> that one will be alright. He's too stubborn to die. <laughs> Knowing you'll always be welcome, no matter how much has changed. That's what having a home is all about. Is that an allusion to Hope's home? I guess we'll find out momentarily. So yeah, we're about to be in the final act of the chapter, finally. Lots of cutscenes, though. What's in here? It's... a tuft of Phoenix Down. Looks like Hope's just waiting at the door. Is there anything new in the data log? Ah, oh, yeah. Events, Chapter 7. Until she wakes. Just as the citizens of Lightning's world feared the lower world of Pulse, the people of Grand Pulse, as Fang calls her home, feared the floating nest of vipers that is Cocoon. It would seem that the two women are not so different. They each grew up in fear of another world, bear the mark of a pulseless sea, have a focus they don't understand, and live as fugitives from the Sanctum. But unlike Lightning, Fang has not given up hope. She still plans to track down Vanille, finish their focus, and then get back to Grand Pulse. Hearing this, Lightning laments the fact that she has no plan and no response reason to keep fighting. Fang responds that she has all the reason anyone can need, to stay alive until Sarah wakes up from her crystal sleep. But how long does the crystal sleep last? I mean, couldn't it be years and years? I mean, Lightning could be long dead by the time that happens, right? As Lightning comes around to this idea, there is an explosion in the distance. Could Snow and Hope be in trouble? Trading worried glances, the two Lassie race off in the direction of the fighting. Oh boy. People. Oh, new info on Fang and Vanille. Vanille. Pretending to be branded at the same time as the rest of her companions, Vanille actually became a lessee on Grand Pulse long ago. Hundreds of years in the past, she and Fang completed their focus and turned to Crystal. Upon waking, they seemed to have lost all memory of these events, and had no knowledge of their present task. While trying to prevent Vanille from becoming a Seath, Fang caused the incident at Yurde Gorge, the event that turned Dodge into a Sanctum lessee. Parted from her friend, Vanille wandered Cocoon alone until the day of the purge. Nice. Erba Yun Fang. 
Fang is a lassie who was born on Grand Pulse, the world that stretches out below floating shell of Cocoon. She joined Vanilla in a centuries-long crystal stasis. Oh, so there we go, centuries long. So why would Lightning be able to stay awake, alive until Sarah gets back? But awoke with no memories of her focus or what she did to complete it. To prevent Vanille's transformation into a Seath, Fang tries to recapture memories of their task, but in doing so causes the incident at Yurade Gorge. Separated from her friend, the proud warrior woman finds herself working with Reigns and the cavalry he leads as they track down the sea. Fang's brand is scorched and twisted, its progress halted. And no explanation why. And now we get to learn about brands. The brands that mark a Lassie as one of the fowls he's chosen change gradually, passing through several different stages. When the eye at the center opens, the brand's final stage, the Lassie becomes a Seath. A brand's rate of progression depends partly on the difficulty of the Lassie's focus. It is also linked closely to the individual's mental state, with severe psychological trauma sometimes spurring rapid advancement. In the most extreme cases, severe fear and shock at being made a Lassie has turned newly made Lassie to Seath at the instant of their branding. Well, gosh, wouldn't that just absolutely suck? I have no idea why it's playing uh, Vanille's theme right now. But I actually think that this is probably a good place to stop the episode as Hope's about to knock on his father's door. Damn, look at their place, though. It's a nice house. Uh, got some sky rises going on, too, that I've never noticed before. But anyway, uh, so yeah, we'll uh, say knock, knock, knock to Mr. S time in the next episode. Because uh, we're getting close to the end of the chapter, but I don't think there's enough time for all the cutscenes we're going to have to watch. So I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit the subscribe button if you liked what you saw. Really appreciate it. You've been at the Scott Spot. You've also been awesome. See you next time.